basically right now this is a voiceover and I haven't actually been able to take the photos yet. I'm in fact sitting at home because I'm getting ready to go out to take them. But this is a voiceover just to explain how I go about taking photos. Right, so to start off, the camera I'm using is a Canon EOS 70D. And I actually like this camera, I use it more than my other one, which is a Canon 5D. Mainly because it's got a touchscreen, which I think is nice, as well as a flash. And I find it uh, generally nice to use. So obviously the first step to taking a good photo is to find something to take a picture of. Now, when you're looking for a good photo opportunity, obviously what you want in the photo changes depending on the style you're going for. But generally, the things you want to think about are to make sure there's not too much going on in the photo, because that can kind of overwhelm the viewer. Unless, of course, that is what you want. Uh, also, you want to think about the colours, so that might be having a wide range of colours, or a very small range of colours, or having all similar colours. You just got to make sure that it matches your mood that you're going for. Also, think about the shapes that you got, as well as the textures of those shapes, as this can heavily affect the style of the picture. Another important point is the lighting got to think about where the light's coming from, how it's reflecting off objects, and how objects are being lit up. And also, to put it all together, you got to think about the composition, where objects are in the frame, and how it's all set out. But that is, of course, down to the photographer, just to get it in a way that you like it. There's no set rules, ways that it should be. Right, so if you're trying to take a really nice photo, you want to have the camera in manual mode, which you can change with the dial on top. If you set it to the M, because that basically gives you full control over all the settings, and it lets you adjust them to make your photo the highest quality possible. And now the settings are done automatically. You may, however, sometimes want to use uh, the automatic mode, just to uh, basically take a bit of pressure off you and let the camera do some of the work. Now when it comes to the settings on the camera, there are four main settings that I focus on. Three of these affect the lighting as well as each of them affects their own separate thing and one of them affects the colour. Now I'll put a picture up on the screen that shows the settings and the effects that they have other than changing the lighting. So the first one is aperture. What this is, is basically the size of the hole that lets light into the lens and the way it works is the higher the number, which is called the f-stop, the smaller the hole, which and the smaller the hole, the less light that's let into the lens and so the darker your picture. However, the second effect that it has, as you can see on this image on screen, is that the smaller the f-stop, the larger the hole, the shorter the depth of field, meaning less of the image will be in focus. If you focus on something close up, everything in the background will be blurry. Or if you focus on something in the background, everything close up will be blurry. But with a high depth of field, which you get with a large aperture, everything in the image will be sharp and in focus. And the way I adjust the aperture on my camera is by turning the scroll wheel on the front next to the screen. The next setting is the shutter speed. And so what this is, is exactly what it says. It's the speed that the shutter opens and closes to take the photo. And the way this works is it's measured 1 over the number that it's set at, meaning the higher the number, the faster the shutter speed. So a shutter speed of 1000 actually means 1000th of a second, 
the shutter speed of 2 actually means half a second. So the lower the shutter speed, the longer the shutter is open for to take the photo. Now what this means is with lower, slower shutter speeds, more light is let into the lens as it's open for longer. But also the secondary effect that this has is it causes blur in your picture if the camera is moving. Now sometimes that's an effect that you want to get motion blur but a lot of the time if you don't have a tripod your hands can be quite shaky so you want a slightly higher shutter speed to account for the movement of the camera to ensure there's no blurriness in the photo. And the way I adjust this on my camera is with the scroll wheel on the top of the camera. And the third setting is the ISO. What this is, is basically whereas the other two settings were physical ways to increase the amount of light in the photo, this is a way to increase the brightness digitally so it happens after the photo is taken. So the higher the ISO, the brighter the photo. However, the secondary effect that this has, which is almost always negative, is that the higher the ISO, the more grainy the picture. So basically it doesn't look as good, it's less clear, less sharp. And the way I adjust ISO on my camera is by pressing the ISO button on the top and then adjusting it using the scroll wheel next to the ISO button.